Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Kang He. I'm a Kibamo advocate. I'm also founded Kesuka. So Kubernetes user group, so far, that's the most active Kubernetes user group. And together, we have 10,000 members part of this meetup group. And I'm also creating the Kubernetes DM com kasdm.com that's the most active kubernetes discussion group feel free to join me by any one of the links feel free to drop me any message so today i'm very happy to be here to talk about a cube armor overview so the cube armor it's the runtime security enforcement tool before i started to talk about a cube armor i really want to show off my digital badges so first of all, I love security. As you can see, I'm certified on top of file public cloud security. And I'm also CKS, that's Kubernetes security certified. Plus I'm fully certified on Kubernetes. So I love to support the community. I have been a Alibaba Cloud MVP for three years. And I'm an AWS community builder for two years. So recently, Actually, so far, I've been one month as a Google Cloud Champion Innovator. And plus, two weeks ago, I just got awarded as a Microsoft MVP for the Cloud Native. So not to mention, I'm also a CNCF Ambassador, Cloud Casa Ambassador, plus a Calico Big Cats Ambassador. Okay, let's learn CubeArmo. So CubeArmo, it's a rundown production for the Kubernetes and other cloud workloads. So it does provide an observability in the policy enforcement system to restrict any unwanted or malicious behavior of the cloud native workloads at the runtime. It was accepted by CNCF back in two years ago at the sandbox maturity label. And recently, yeah, exactly, a few weeks ago, they just submitted a proposal to move Cube Armor from the sandbox stage to the incubating stage. So exciting. So that means in the past two years, Cube Armor has gained a lot of attractions from different organizations and the community. So let's say, what is Cube Armor? So in a short, it's a runtime security enforcement tool. How it works? So you can see there is a diagram listed here. So Cube Armo is here and uh, it's running on different systems. So how it works? Basically, first of all, it's leveraged the eBPF for the observability or monitoring to understand how your application behavior looks like what processes you are using, what files you're using, what network ports you're using. And with the option discovery, you can better understand what the application behavior looks like from your runtime. And you can apply the zero trust list of permissive control. And once you understand what's the situation from here and how to enforce the situation. Let's say I just want to give three processes running and I just need to access two files and maybe two network ports as well. So with the enforcement, it does leverage the LSM. It's part of the Linux system modules to for the restricted actions. So you can leverage, uh, you can use it to do the secrets hardening to do the inline re remediation or prevention and also to harden new applications. And as, as you can see from the screen, not only support the Kubernetes, it does support other containers and IoT devices or 5G networks. And so far, it has been downloaded over 700,000 times. It was created by Arkinox, then donated to CNCF. So if I want to run Cube Armor, where I can run? So first of all, it can be running from all Kubernetes. As a daemon set, 
or it can be running from a virtual machine, any Linux virtual machine or physical machines. It can also run you from the cube vault. That's the new Kubernetes virtualization layer. So nowadays, people are moving away from the traditional virtual machine. They deploy many, many applications to the Kubernetes. Kubernetes is the standard platform. Now they just need a few VMs. You don't have to run VMware, Hyper-V, or Nutanix. So you literally, you can create the virtual machine from the Kubernetes cluster. That's Kubernetes. Okay, so what's unique from a cube armor? So this is very important. So based on my understanding, the whole market right now, only cube armor does the inline prevention. You can leverage the zero trust. So how it works, I mentioned earlier, leverage the eBPF for the observability to identify the application behavior. I just needed three process. I only need to access two files. I only need to access two network ports. Okay, so I understand the application behavior. I give these access, then I deny everything else. How to deny? It leverage the LSM module, could be my app arm or BPF or LSM or SC Linux. What other vendors do, do to prevent, uh, you know, attack? What's the, uh, what I describe here is a post attack mitigation. So vendor A, vendor B, vendor C, they are all using the eBPF. It's a commonly used by all the network uh, security vendor or could be observability vendors. But the main difference comparing to Cube Armor, you can see the vendor A, yes, it's a very good tool to detect there is a malicious activity. So someone is taking over, might do something attack to your system. So when the I detect the problems, then kill the processor from the user space. So here is the problems. From the time you detect the problems uh, until you kill the process, there is a gap. So maybe somebody already took your secrets, already copied your service account, or maybe somebody already started to encrypt your systems. Ransomware already started to encrypt your system. Even just 20 milliseconds, it's happening. It's already happening. So it becomes the problem. It's too late. So what about vendor B and the vendor C? They take a different approach. They detect the problems. Then they kill the processor from the kernel space. And then at the end of the day, they stop the containers. So the main, still, again, the difference compared to cube armor, it's too late. You detect the problems, you kill the processor, you stop the containers. Someone already took the secrets. Someone already you know, encrypted your system. It's too late. So that's why cube armor becomes the, the very popular, especially for the uh, for the you know government, uh, financial industries, uh, some of the companies require heavily zero trust architecture. So for the runtime. Okay, so I'm a Kubernetes guy. I love Kubernetes. So let's say how Kube Armor, what system are supported. So first of all, we talk about a Kubernetes. It can be running as a demo set. Or it can be running from other containerized, uh, you know, applications. In this case, it will be running as a system D mode, or it can be running from uh, any virtual machine or bare metal machines. But right now, only support Linux. So on the right hand side, you can see what Kubernetes supported versions, all the managed Kubernetes, including GKE, AKS, OKE, IBM AKS, EKS, etc. Even OpenShift, Microsoft, RKE, etc. So all different Kubernetes Linux distributions also support. You got SUSE here, Ubuntu here, Red Hat here, Amazon Linux, etc. Okay. So again, I'm a Kubernetes guy. I want to show you how it looks like from the Kubernetes environment. So this is an architect. So I got a Kubernetes cluster here. I got a multiple pods running here. Cube Armor running here as a demo sets from the user space. And uh, from here, 
It will leverage the eVPN for the monitoring or observability to understand what resources you're using. And then how to apply the enforcement. So again, I want to highlight, it leverages the LSMs. And by creating the security policy, basically it's a YAML file, and then apply it to the system via the ARM or SE Linux or BPF RSM, apply it to the system, and then block the, uh, you know, only allow the good guys to pass, block the hacker activities. But also, QAM will also provide the command line tool for you to verify to do the install to observe or what's happening to provide you the recommendation based on the uh, different uh, compliance framework it could be like a CIS, NIST, uh, STIGs, etc. So once they detect any problems, it will send you the alerts. So it can be the standard output or can be sent to the external SIM tools. So how it works for the external SIM tool? Let's see. So it does the cube armor does allow you to extend the outputs with the cube armor relay server. So by default, the cube armor relay server will be deployed with the cube armor. It will be running on every node. And with the cube armor relay server here, it allows you to collect all the messages, alerts, or system logs from each node, and then allow other logging systems to collect. Uh, these through the service. So here is a diagram to show you how you can stream CubeArmo telemetry to other SIM tools. So as you can see from the diagram, so we are using Azure Sentinel as an example. You got a Kubernetes cluster running here. You got a CubeArmo running from all, all different nodes, and it can be configured via the CubeArmo relay. You can set the standard output to Azure Sentinel, for example. What type of telemetry event supporting? So it could be a lot when the policy is violating, or could be a log when a policy executes a syscall or any other actions such as a file access, a process creation, could be network socket creators, connector, or acceptor, etc. Or could be any messages, the internal QAnon or demo messages. So how to stream to the same tool? There are two ways. One is by the QAnon or release in the art. The other way is by the adapter. You can create an adapter here, allow you to talk to QAnon or relay server, and then collect the messages and send the message to Azure Sentinel, or could be Splunk, or could be Grafana, or any other SIM tools. So excited! This is a very you know cool tool to secure your runtime across all different environment, Kubernetes, uh, your Linux runtime, your virtual machine, your physical machines. Let's see a live demo. So I realized it take a little bit of time, so I decided to record a separate video to show you how to install Kubernetes to the Kubernetes cluster how to run a few test cases to show you how to block a certain process, or how to block a file access. It could be you just want to audit someone is trying to access your secrets, for example. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope it is useful to you. If you find it useful, please do share and like it. Thank you so much. Have a good day.